everybody. My name is Suma Narayanan. I'm the engineering manager responsible for driver assistance and safety. Today we are going to experience some functionalities of Detroit Assurance 5.0. We will start by doing a demonstration inside the track. Uh, first one would be a bicyclist who would be riding on the blind spot of the truck. We have two short range radars that scans the entire length of the tractor all the way down to the trailer. And that's usually the blind spot that uh, the driver doesn't have good access to. So today you will see one of our colleagues in a bicycle. And as he appears into the blind spot, as soon as I turn on the indicators, the system will detect and warn me. The same thing we will do with the pedestrian, after which we will hit the road. Karen, I'm ready to go if you are. So what you will see here is uh, this bicyclist will start coming beside me. Imagine this to be like a city traffic conditions. As the driver takes the truck and the trailer through city conditions, there are lots of people in the driver's blind spot. As soon as I turn the indicator on, it warns in the instrument cluster. You see that little triangle turned red, indicating that there is someone in the blind spot. The short range radar is on the passenger side of the vehicle and that is the most difficult part of the truck the driver has access to. Now we will do a similar situation except it will be covering a pedestrian. Think about it also as if you're in a city driving condition and then you're navigating through narrow roads and narrow streets. As soon as the pedestrian is detected in the instrument cluster, you can see that the warning triangle turns yellow. And then as soon as I put the indicators on, it turns red and issues an optic acoustic warning. Now we will get on to the uh, road. Here what we will try to see is adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist and lane departure protection. So this is a 126 BBC New Cascadia. It's got a Detroit diesel uh, engine, DD15, 500 horsepower, 1750 torque. It's got a DT12 transmission and it has the Detroit Assurance Safety Speed. So now that we are in a highway driving conditions, I will enable, I will enable my cruise control. So Karen, are you going to do a As soon as I enable cruise control, control, not only my distance control is active, right. but also my lateral control is active. So the camera is constantly monitoring lane markings on the road. And once it is able to determine my position, the vehicle's position in the lane, it gives small steering inputs to make sure that the vehicle stays centered in the lane. I'm set at 55 miles per hour. So kindly note that this is for demonstration purpose only where, when I'm taking my hands off. We always encourage the drivers to keep the hands on the steering wheel because that is the primary function of the driver. For this purpose, you can see that the steering wheel icon here turns blue, indicating that the lane centering is active. Once the lane centering is active, the vehicle constantly tries to make sure that the vehicle stays centered in the lane. If there are no hands-on activity detected, we start warning the driver by putting a yellow pop-up warning. And if the vehicle starts to depart, you hear the rumble strip noise, which indicates that the lane departure warning is working. So in this case, the vehicle started to depart the lane and then you saw the steering wheel corrected and bring the vehicle back into the lane. So that is called lane departure protection. And once we have clear lane markings, we also will start enabling the lane keep assist. And that is when the steering wheel icon here turns from gray to blue. Now it has turned to blue which means that the vehicle is constantly being corrected and the vehicle stays centered within its lane. This is only for the purpose that you can see I'm taking my hands off. If there are no hands on detected, you start seeing the warning to the driver, requesting the driver to put the hands back on the steering wheel. The driver in the front now is going to reduce the speed and go down to 45 miles per hour. We detect that and we start slowing down. You heard that the engine stopped fueling and then we start engaging engine brakes if needed and now we adjust our vehicle speed to match the vehicle speed in front of us. 
the hands-off activity continuously is monitored and if the driver is ignoring, we start issuing an optic and acoustic alert. Once the driver puts the hands back on the steering wheel, we acknowledge that the driver is engaged and we put the warning away. But once again, this is purely that you can experience it. At no point of time, we want the drivers to depend on these systems and disengage from the activity. So in this case, I would just let the system uh, go through its complete warning cascade. We start by issuing an optic only warning at 15 seconds. It's a yellow pop-up card. And at 30 seconds onwards, we would start making it optic and acoustic. And you can imagine that this is a great fatigue reduction aspect. In addition to maintaining a safe following distance with the vehicle in front, now the vehicle can stay centered in its lane. We always want to treat these systems as driver assistance systems. At no point of time, the driver can depend on these completely and start disengaging from the activity. Our goal is with the help of these systems, the drivers can stay attentive. They can come back home at the end of their shift less stressed than they normally would be. At this point, it's going to go to 60 seconds and you would see this light go from blue to gray. At that point, we have reached 60 seconds of hands-off activity and now the system is not controlling laterally anymore. It is only the lane departure protection that keeps the vehicle centered in the lane. But it is still maintaining a safe following distance with the vehicle in front. And it continues to warn the driver. And now I'm gonna take over. If my hands are put back in the steering wheel, it immediately stops the warning. And currently we only keep the adaptive cruise control on just because if the vehicle in front of us starts to slow down, we will make sure that we keep a safe following distance. We need to have a lot of attributes around the environment aware before yeah. we start bringing a fully loaded truck. So those are all the things that you would see develop as these systems get smarter and as we get more sensors and information available. The hands-on detection is done by uh, monitoring what kind of a steering input is given. We do not have any capacitors or any anything on the steering wheel that detects the contact. We see who is giving input to the steering wheel. If the driver is giving input to the steering wheel, that's when we know that there is someone uh, behind the wheel fully attentive. So my foot is still off. The vehicle in front of me is going to come to a full stop. Please uh, watch out for some deceleration. Um, so what the vehicle is trying to do is it's maintaining a safe following distance while staying in adaptive cruise control while maintaining a safe following distance and as the vehicle in front of us comes to a full stop we also come to a full stop and we'll hold the brake because in some cases the stops could be in an incline or a decline so we can hold indefinitely and in this case the vehicle started moving in less than two seconds which means that we can also start moving in less uh, if the stop is less than two seconds kind of bear with me i need to take a left here so this feature is called adaptive cruise control to zero miles per hour perfect for stop and go traffic as you can imagine